What's up, Airbnb Nation? I've got Joan Bianchi here with me, who is the is behind the, var, the vacation rental market analysis that I sell on my website. It basically tells you anywhere in the world, if you have a market, it tells you where in that market is best to buy your property, what micro neighborhood and what size of the home. The people who have purchased it have been overwhelmingly satisfied with this. So I asked John if he could come on and show us a little bit more in depth what he does. It's not a cheap product, it's expensive, it's worth it. You can you can see by the reviews on the website. But I wanted to make it open to more people in case you had the time. I will say up front it is a little bit complex. Uh, I did this for the Belmonte penthouse in Medellin. But, it, but that said, if you're a little bit tech savvy and you have the time, I want you to be able to do this on your own. You will need a AirDNA subscription regardless. So John, give us a little bit more about what we'll be doing in this video and then let's jump into it. I'm excited. Perfect. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate it. Um, so in this video, I'm going to try and give as much value as I possibly can about my understanding of data and the process behind understanding. Uh, this is, you know, there, there's a ton of information out there uh, that I've put out there already about all this, but I wanted to put something that was sort of uh, concise that was very easy to understand. Um, and so I put together this four step process for everyone to be able to easily understand what uh, we do. So this is the four step process that I've used to understand Airbnb data to make the most sense of a market, right? Whenever I'm going into an area, I'm trying to understand uh, where the most money can be made because I want to get the best bang for my buck. And so what we're going to walk through is this here. So we, first we want to extract the data. This is all going to make sense in, in just a second here. Then we're going to find the most profitable area slash unit size. Then we're going to figure out uh, what drives the revenue. And then we're going to find the properties that match that, okay? And the, what I'm explaining right now is technically going to be a free version. Uh, and then there's also a, a paid version as well. So let's first take a look at AirDNA, right? AirDNA is great. Uh, but one of the things that is, is tough about AirDNA is the way that they actually display their data. Uh, so they have all these different dashboards that show you averages of entire cities, which is to me is honestly not that useful because um, I need to know how a four bedroom on one side of the city does in comparison to a one bedroom on the other side of the city, right? And so I need to narrow it down as much as I possibly can. Um, and the way that they display it all is these little dots. And the whole thing about data is that you want to try and find some sort of trend or some sort of consistency, right? If you can find a pattern, you know that pattern is repeatable. And so it's called the Burger King logic. McDonald's spends millions of dollars to figure out what corner to be on and Burger King opens up across the street. We want to be able to find that trend, that sort of consistency. And the way that this is all laid out, it becomes really difficult to see any sort of pattern, right? Because as I float through all these different uh, areas, we're kind of bouncing around all different homes. Now I can obviously adjust this and go to just looking at the four bedrooms uh, and narrow it down to a specific area, but I would have to go through every single one of these four bedrooms and, and sort of categorize them all to know exactly where the most money is being made for a four bedroom across the entire city, right? And so this is what leads us to the very first step of the process, which is extract the data. And so because this is not an easy view to find a pattern, what I teach people to do is to quite literally extract this. And this is actually what I used to do back in like 2017 when I first got started with Airbnb. Um, this is Chicago and every single role that you're looking at is a different Airbnb. And I would pull out the information from AirDNA and plug it into this spreadsheet to try and create some sort of pattern. So I created these little uh, sections of the city and then I pulled out all of the data that I could. And then over here, I would, what I would do is um, put all the three bedrooms together. And that was, that was all of their revenue. And I would figure out what the average revenue would be for the three bedroom for a specific area, right? And so that allowed me to see some sort of pattern. What I could see that that was that on average, people were making about $85,000 a year. So this was the very first step was to, to pull all of that data out and plug it into a spreadsheet so that it could be side by side and you could actually see the information and see some sort of consistency or trend, right? Now, this is what you did for Chicago is where you had your property management company, right? Yeah, exactly. So I want to make clear for you the, the goal, 100% premium goal. You didn't care where in Chicago. You just narrowed it down to Chicago and you were looking at any market, whatever is the most profitable market. I want to identify that market, the size of the, the size of the home and where exactly to buy. Exactly. On the other hand, if someone want, if someone already has kind of a neighborhood and they're like, I know I want to buy in this neighborhood because maybe I want to stay there a little bit or something, but at least I can maximize in this neighborhood. Where should right. I buy it? What size? And you can also do that. It's one or the other. hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. And, and, um, personally, I would not recommend if you had like one neighborhood in a city and you were like, I just want to stick to this neighborhood. That's, that's, uh, you're kind of handcuffing yourself. Right and it might not be a good neighborhood. So it would be a good idea to check the other areas. However, you definitely can follow this process for that same area as well. 
at least you can confirm your your get your expectations right, so you're not you know thinking you're going to make a hundred thousand when you're really going to make fifty thousand. Yeah. I think it's going to be beneficial either way. Exactly. Yep. Perfect. Um, and so this is once again this is the way that I used to pull this out in 2017. Right. Um, since then, I've developed a program that allows me to a software that allows me to actually extract all the data from your DNA once you bought a subscription. And uh, when I pull it out, what ends up looking it ends up looking like 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 this here. So this is all the raw data. Uh, right now we're looking at Nashville, Tennessee, and you can see that I've, I've pulled out all this raw data. So uh, before is what you before is what you used to do. This is what you do now. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But the logic sort of stays the same. So mm -hmm. if you if you wanted to do it for free for yourself, you can manually pull all that data out and and, and plug it into a spreadsheet like this. If you don't want to, the market analysis will um, will extract all that data this way. Right. Okay. And I'm going to use this as an example for the process, just because it's more simply laid out and easier to understand. It's right. superior too because you have more data. Exactly that too, yeah. and it's fresher. It's a market, right? So, um, so this is every single role that we're looking at here is an Airbnb listing, right? Um, and we're looking at Nashville, Tennessee, and I extracted over sixty-two hundred listings, right? And, I have, and every single column is a different data point. So we have the average daily rate, the occupancy, the bedrooms, bathrooms, all this information. I take all that, I organize it into this format. But what I really want to go through here is actually um, when you have all this extracted. And you and you've picked out a neighborhood and you're trying to figure out how much a certain unit size makes in that area how you go through that to understand it as an example this is so just like this over here kind of broke down a specific area within chicago and i would extracted all that data that i wanted what we're looking at right now is this is all the extracted data for an area in phoenix arizona um, and they're all four bedrooms and they're all located in the exact same zip code okay and I have I have their Airbnb links right here, and more importantly, I have their actual revenue right here. And what I've done is I've organized it from who's making the most to who's making the least, right? Okay, Does that makes sense. The highlights are yours, but all of the numbers are from AirDNA. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I've I've actually already gone through the process with this, and that's that's why I'm cherry picking here, and I'm using this as an example, um, just so that everyone can see the the patterns that I'm talking about, so you can see the consistency that does exist in the data, which allows for you to repeat that process. In other words, you open up a Burger King across the street from McDonald's. Okay. Right? So the, the part that we skipped though, is you took the raw data from that first tab and you sorted it here, which is a, a function within anyone's um, Google Sheets or Excel, right? Correct, yeah, okay. yeah. First I cleaned, yeah, sorry, I did a little skip a, a step there. First I cleaned up the data, organized it, sorted it, and then I chose this area to look into because the amount of revenue that seemed to have been being made here. Okay, and it's not. Yeah. I've, I've worked with Google Sheets. You have to. It's not tremendously difficult. You have to learn to learn it, but it's not tremendously difficult to sort that raw data. No, and the and and like anyone who does receive one of the market analysis, they get it in this version here, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and we'll, we we have another video where we're, we're going to be talking about that and going through exactly what this is. Um, so for this, I want to stay focused on the the, the process of it, right? Okay. Understanding where the most money is being made. So first, we've extracted the data. Right, that was the very first part. Then we found the most profitable area unit size. I guess that's kind of the part that I just skipped over, finding the most profitable area or unit size, which would be if you had pulled out all of the data, you're gonna be able to see where the most money is being made within certain areas. So let me actually take a second and, and explain that right here. I apologize for that. So what we're looking at on the left-hand side, we have all the different zip codes in this for, for Nashville, Tennessee. Let me actually explain the Phoenix report. It'll make more sense for me if I stay in Phoenix. What we're looking at right now is uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and this is the pivot table of all of the raw data organized, right? In a, in a way that's really easy to understand. And once I explain it, it'll be easy to understand. So on the left-hand side, what we have are all the different zip codes and they're in order of where the most listings are to where the least amount of listings are, right? And so that way we know where the demand is. And then up top, what we have are the different unit sizes. So a studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, so on and so forth, right? Now, where those two connect is the average annual revenue for a unit size in that area. So a one bedroom in this zip code makes on average $28,000 a year as an Airbnb, right? Now, mind you, that's just an average. So some are doing better and some are doing worse. Now, the way I explain this to everybody is that what you wanna do here is you just wanna look for the highest average, right? So in other words, you're looking for the high, the biggest numbers and that's where you start to do your research. So a great example is actually this right here. So a two bedroom, in this zip code is making about $34,000 on average. 
a three bedroom is making about $90,000 on average. Instantly, you know, you're never going to touch a one bedroom or a two bedroom in this area, but you will look at the three, four or five. Okay. And then on top of that, you can see that a three bedroom is doing 90,000, whereas a five bedroom is doing 100,000. Now, mind you, these are just averages. However, there's only a $10,000 difference in the average. And so we already know that a three bedroom is most likely the best thing to purchase or rent in this neighborhood because it almost is the exact same as a five bedroom. So why would you ever get a five bedroom? Because to get a five bedroom, you're going to pay more money. Whereas, you know, to get a three bedroom from two bedroom, you're going to pay more money too. But we can see quite clearly from the step up from revenue that greater purchase cost will be worth it. Whereas in a four and five, we're not sure, but two to three, definitely. Exactly. Exactly. Now, maybe, you know, a five bedroom can still make tons of sense, right? And it gives you a competitive advantage and it gives you like better chances to, to hit the, it makes it easier to hit those numbers. So there's a bunch of advantages. You just gotta have, kinda have to outweigh the pros and cons, right? That makes sense? And this is, yeah, and, and this is just, if it's not abundantly clear, this is what you're paying for. So the product that I sell, Vacation Rental Market Analysis, it's uh, 650 bucks and you just made an extra, you know, th this is where, it, so, you know, I think I should raise the price to be honest, but if you didn't have this skill yourself and you could pay someone to do it, this is hugely, hugely valuable. So we have this and then, and then after we have this, you, you, you're going to zoom in on this neighborhood on, on this size of bedrooms. And that's the next tab. Exactly. Okay. That would be our next step, right? So the first one is we've extracted all the data. The next step is that we find the most profitable area or unit size, right? Um, and then from there, we want to figure out what drives the revenue. Okay. So let me explain what that means. So we are going to choose this one here. I am cherry picking. I've gone, as you can see, all these different colors is me actually going through this data. Um, so I'm going to pick this one here, which is a four bedroom in uh, 85032, right? And so let me scroll over. And you're so, picking this one because I assume the clarity of the data, the, the data is very clear. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yep. Okay. I don't want to sound like I'm overly selling this product, but I'm like, I don't do these interviews with a lot of people. So like, I am very confident in if someone buys it, they will be very satisfied as is hundred percent of the purchasers so far. But the other value comes in that you, this would be easy to see because it's so clear and abundant, but you can still, because you've done this so much, you can see, you can notice a greater variety of patterns, even when they're smaller, they're not so, they're not so obvious. You can still right. see that in the data. Whereas someone like me, if I were to do it pretty new, I might not be able to see it. I'm, what I'm saying is I think I'll be missing a lot of the clarity of the data or not noticing patterns. I'm not sure if I would have picked this one as well as, as I suppose what I'm saying. You would have looked at all this and you don't think you would have went here first, right? Or like kind of went into it. And exactly. I, so, so to answer that, I didn't go here first either, right? So I didn't see this right away either. What I did notice was that um, the, the one in the two bedrooms like barely reached over 40, right? Whereas for some reason with the three bedrooms, there was this sort of big jump and the, the numbers got bigger, right? So the way I usually explain this to people is I say, look for the biggest number and start there. So that's usually where the most money is being made and that's where you want to go, right? Because the bigger that gap you can make it from expenses to profit, the more money you're going to make. So just look for the biggest number, right? I, I try and like make it as simple as that. And so even for myself, I started right here. This was my very first spot that I looked and then I looked um, at the three bedrooms and the five bedrooms. But this spot here, the reason we're not looking at it is because this is where there's multi-million dollar mansions. And so, yes, they're making 150, 117, $150,000 a year, but the home costs $2 million, mm. right? So I've, I've sort of vetoed it out as like an area that that's not profitable. Um, you can't cash flow here. I had to go through, I've gone, I went through a ton of these different areas um, and I'm cherry picking saying that this one is, is my favorite one to go through. But that's what, that's what you get with the report. You are, you will be with your knowledge. You will be cherry picking the best always. Always. Yeah. So like, here's a, here's a clean, so this is a report that I haven't worked on and this is Nashville, Tennessee. I'll give you, I'll count to five. You tell me where the most profitable area is within the four bedrooms. Um, it's 10, row 10, 271. I mean, that's the biggest number by go. far. <laughs> right, look, five seconds. You know where the most profitable place is in all of Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Right? Well, at least I don't know about profit, but revenue. I would have to, it might be one of those cases where it's a million yes. dollar mansion. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And, and it, it, this is a really luxurious area, right? Damn, that's crazy. 271,000 off one, one Airbnb. <laughs> Well, it's, that's the average. So some are doing better and some are doing worse. If you actually want to have a little fun and take a look at that real quick, there's one doing 404, 400, 360, 350. Oh. Like they're, they're way, way up there. Some of these are good data, some of them are not. You'd have to go through it and sort it, but they're still way up there. Now, there um, is something, and I have a video on this with AirDNA. They used to, and tell me if they still do have a revenue problem, 
where if they if if some hosts were to just be available six months, the six busiest months, Air DNA would multiply that by two, as if there's a, yeah. a busy season for the whole year, and the data, the revenue in this case would be inflated. Correct. Yeah, so they still have that issue. They have a ton of bad data, a lot of issues. So um, this is the bad data. Uh, this sorry, this is my checklist for bad data. Okay. So if anyone's watching this video, you can pause it on this and, and, and write down this checklist. This is usually how I sort through and try and figure out if it's good or bad data, right? Now on top of that, I also have a video here. So if you go to my channel, that's my name. Um, you would look for this video here. It says avoiding bad data. It's a 23 minute video walking through everything that you need to be aware of when it comes to bad data on AirDNA. I almost signed two leases that were uh, $7,000 a piece off of because the data was bad and I thought I was gonna make a crazy amount of money with these homes. But the, I, it was all bad data and I would have lost like a crazy amount of money. 7000 a month. $7,000 a month. Yeah, I almost signed two leases. Because <laughs> the profits were like, there, it was like $200,000 it looked like I could make per home. So why would I spend $84,000 a year? To make $200,000, wow. right? Yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to I'm gonna bring it back here because uh, we, we let's sort of regroup to the different steps, which is, you know, first we extracted the data, then we found the most profitable area, which is where we're going into. And now we're going to figure out what drives the revenue. We're looking into this area here. I'm just going to pull it up. Just give me one second. So these are the four bedrooms. Now what we're looking at here is I've completed this. Okay, so I've already gone through all of this. And I'm gonna explain exactly what I did to, to make sense of this and what the results were. Each row we're looking at is an Airbnb listing. That's an Airbnb, that's another one. This is just like the raw data. However, it's only the four bedrooms within the very specific zip code. What I've done is I've organized these from who's making the most to who's making the least. And then what I've done is I've gone through this and I've gotten rid of all of the bad data, uh, which is what you see in yellow and red. Um, and I've sort of highlighted which properties I think are are like the best pieces of data, okay? So that's what, and then this green, it's also good data. Um, we're just, it's, it's. Uh, I just, if it's highlighted green, I like it more, I guess you could say, right? And what I've done is I've gone through this and I've actually opened up these listings and taken a look at them to understand what's allowing them to make the amount of money that they're making and trying to figure out what are the features and benefits and amenities and the way the photos have been taken and the way the kitchens look the way the backyards look. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to find some sort of pattern to the amount of money that's being made by each one of these homes, okay? So as you can see here, there's a grouping of homes making about $100,000, right? Roughly, if you're to average that out. So we have five different homes that are all roughly making $100,000 and it's all good data. Now mind you, we have two of them that are, uh, you know, still missing almost two, uh, two to three months worth of data. So they're likely gonna do better than 100,000. This is a good group of homes to figure out exactly what they all look like. Because what ends up happening, I've done this so many times that it just, I, the pattern happens every single time. Where you go through this and all of these homes look very, very identical. They have a similar um, kitchen, bathroom. They have a similar like way the photos are taken, sometimes interior design. They almost all have pools. They're almost all heated pools. They almost all have the a fire pit. And they, uh, like they have all of these same sort of features. And so if you were to go through it, you, you review the photos and you start to understand what's actually driving the revenue to allow them to make that amount of money, right? And so what this does is where you, cre you create a checklist of all the revenue drivers. And uh, I quite literally make notes on almost all of the different listings as I'm going through it. So I understand what's allowing it to make that amount of money. And then I also go through the homes that aren't making that amount and I try to understand what they're doing wrong. What are they missing? So if they don't have a pool it's a very clear and easy one to go okay well they don't have a pool that's why they're not making this amount of money but there's a lot of these other features too like just you know time like these some of these ones here one will be uh, a smaller backyard than the other and everything else will be the same but that'll be the one differentiator and so logically that's the one thing that might be actually causing them to not make as much money the video will be back shortly but reishi and luna really had something to say Sometimes homes will be identical, but they're making a certain amount that's there's a difference. Like the homes look really, really similar. But then what ends up happening is that the, the nightly rate is off or they have really low or high occupancy. And so they're just better at the revenue management game and the way that they market their home, right? Essentially, the idea here is that you want to go step by step by step, looking at the homes and making checklists about what they have inside the home. And then what that's going to do is you're going to find that pattern, okay? And so this is what I have created here. This is my checklist of the results of what drives revenue. And so first off, you have to have the private pool. You have, a, have to have a pool heater. You have to have a backyard that must be larger than just the pool area, okay? Because if it's just the pool area, you don't have enough room for all of your guests to commingle and enjoy the backyard. So you need all these additional features. 
you need you need space for the fireplace area. There needs to be a little fire pit, and everyone can can sit around that. There needs to be sun bathing chairs, so there needs to be enough space for those to lay out as well. There needs to be a good sized kitchen, and it needs to be newer. So it can't be an older looking kitchen. You're gonna not be you're not gonna be able to get the nightly rate that you want to get. There should be a grass area, and ideally have a putting green on it. If you can have that, even if it's just a small little section, that's going to significantly drive your revenue.、Um, and then enough extra space in the house for a pool table. So the house itself, inside, you got to have the four bedrooms, but you also want there to be a living room that's big enough to throw a pool table in there or some sort of gaming area. If you don't have that, you don't have enough space, and your home is too small, right? And then on top of that, anything that's luxurious is just going to drive your revenue up a little higher. And so, okay, wait, stop right there because you just. Touched on something that I don't even know if you recognize, but you might. But as a guest, what what you've done here is you have put yourself in the mind of a guest looking at listings, and whether the guest knew it or not, these homes are doing the best. So these are the things that the guest, whether they know it or not, like for example, what I mean by that is they might not know I'm looking for a putting green. But based on the availability of listings, ultimately the one with the putting green wins because this these guests are looking at the few ones and they decide okay this one. So that is that's really interesting as well. That is so that that's that's exactly it, right? So the, the, how do you make more money with Airbnb than your competitors? You get people to book your home more often. If your home's constantly booked, you can raise your price, right? And so like what's making them book your home over somebody else's, right? What's getting you to the front page, like? This is the stuff that is going to make people want to book yours more often over somebody else's. And the more you occupy, the higher your nightly rate becomes. I figured out that I can make between a hundred and a hundred and forty thousand dollars. The the more that I have of this, the the larger my backyard, the more luxurious my pool looks, the more that I can add in all these additional little features like the putting green and whatnot. The closer to one forty that I'm going to get. The, the the smaller my backyard gets, right? The less luxurious the pool looks.、Uh, the more crammed I have to put everything in there. The, the closer I'm going to get to 100. Now, the reason why this is so important is because if you know that, if you clearly, clearly know it, it's called a buy box, right? So I've now created this buy box of in this certain area, if it meets all this criteria, I'm going to make 140,000 dollars. And so I have this 20% rule where if I'm going to buy something, I want the revenue to be 20% of the purchase price, right? And then it usually always works out, right? When you're when you're going to do it. And so、um, if it's if I can make 140,000 dollars. Off the property, then I can buy a property worth seven hundred thousand, and I will. It'll be profitable. It'll be cash flow, right? And so, and the closer I get to this, the better, right? And now, on top of that, I this is the zip code in in、um, Phoenix, and the red side here is where I can buy the property. Okay, so there's this highway here, and I can't buy on the left side. The homes don't do as well. None of the good homes are on this side. They're all over here, right? For whatever reason. And then the closer I get to this little circle area here, the better I'll do as well. The more revenue is on top of that. So not only do, does this all matter, the location on top of that also matters, right? And so the question then becomes: Can I find a house that meets all this criteria for seven hundred thousand in this area? And then I, so I open up Zillow, and I've already set this up. It's ready to go.、Um, and I looked at the house, homes that sold in the past twelve months. I've set them up for seven hundred thousand dollars as the max that I can pay.、Um, I'm looking at just four bedrooms. And I'm looking into. They must have a pool,、um, and I actually have set it up so that there's seven seventy five hundred square feet. And what you can see here is this is the little circle area, and that's the highway, right? Every single one of these homes here would be a would have been a good purchase, likely, for me, and it would have been a profitable、uh, investment if I had if I had purchased it. And so this tells me that in this area, there are homes that sell at this amount that will allow me to make about a hundred to one hundred forty thousand dollars a year. And you could and take so, this to a real estate agent as well, and say, "I know I want to buy here, this size, very specific." The real estate agent, I'm sure, would love that. Of course, yeah, they definitely would. And it, and it, it comes like what it does is it increases your confidence in your ability to actually purchase, whether you're doing rental arb- arbitrage or if you're actually purchasing, right? Because rental arbitrage is the exact same. Just think, what is a mortgage on a seven hundred thousand dollar home? You you do the math on it, it's like three thousand ish, right? If that were to be the case, you you would still end up being cash flowing with this property. If you were to hit these numbers, the logic is the same. The,、uh, rental arbitrage and actually purchasing is the, the expenses are almost identical. You can then take that exact same logic and just change this to rent, and see if homes rent for three thousand. So see, they actually don't rent for three thousand. What if they rent for thirty five hundred? No, they don't rent for thirty five hundred. So it doesn't look like you can rent a home in this area and meet the numbers, but you might be able to uh, uh, buy one in this area, right? Which is the advantage of buying. So that's so that's the the, the process that you go through to try and. 
break this break down an area right and so that in there in our steps here that's figuring out what drives revenue so i figured out all of the different things that drive revenue and then we actually kind of jumped to this one which is find properties that match that that's what i did on zillow right so i went in and actually checked that out so to rewalk through this first you want to get all that data out of our dna whether you're pulling it out manually or you're working with me to get it all uh pulled out through a, a software that allows you to extract thousands of rows in a second you can do that as well then from there you're looking at this pivot table to figure out where the most money is being made right or you're however you've organized it when you manually extracted it and you're trying to see where do i see the biggest numbers just keep it simple where are the biggest numbers once you find the biggest numbers go into that information and go one by one and try to make a list of everything that you believe is driving the revenue what are the consistent patterns that are showing up that are allowing these homes to hit that amount right and then vice versa what is not showing up in the lower performing homes so that way you know it's proof that if it's not showing up there but it is showing up here and they're making more money that's logically why they're probably making more money right and now you go now you've created this checklist and you've created you have a, a sort of buy box built out here if i hit all of this criteria i'll make this amount so i can buy a home for that amount then go to what's actually available online and try and see if you can find something uh, in that range and that will be a good investment for you and so that's the that's the process right this i'll just that's a good summary i'll just add one more thing and that is this fills in one aspect that's very difficult on um when you're doing airbnb investments and that is it tells you a little bit more about the demand side and it tells you actually pretty pretty securely about the demand side of airbnb we have the supply side that's very easy how many homes are there but the demand side is difficult how many guest arrivals are there coming where are they going so what you're doing with this by analyzing this data is you're getting a pretty solid data point on that demand data without knowing that demand data you're still seeing the end result where are they actually going what houses are they actually buying and based on that what's their what's their occupancy these specific houses so that's uh often an overlooked aspect when people are investing the demand side because people usually see a lot of supply but if there's uh, a lot of supply, which probably means there's a lot of demand, but there's usually some arbitrage where there's less supply and there's less demand, but but the demand is still higher than the supply. That might that make yep. sense. I hope, I hope sense. I was clear there. I've, I've mentioned that in a few other videos as well. Yeah, that does make sense. Um, and, and one other thing to talk about on with this is that, uh, you know, I obviously do this for a living. Like this is my whole thing I've been doing it for years so like naturally this comes really easy to me I understand it and I you know I felt this sort of process for myself a lot of other people might be looking at this and being like that was a lot how the hell would I learn all that right and just be a little overwhelmed um and I, anyone who gets the market analysis off of your site Danny they they should feel okay because there's this course on YouTube so I put a 16 part video series on YouTube that explains everything that we just talked about in greater detail like significantly greater detail, right? So it's, it is, this helps you understand the report, but more importantly, it helps you understand my process that I've used myself. And this is, this is completely free and it's hundred percent based off of the market analysis, which is, which is this, that they would get from your site. I, again, I don't want to overly <laughs> sell you, but I personally had experience. So I'll just wrap it up by, by mentioning one more thing that kind of hit me profoundly. A friend made me aware of this a few years ago. Um, and he made me aware of the time value of my, uh, the value of my time. And what, when it hit me was that when I, I was in um, Casablanca, Morocco, and I was, uh, what I usually do when I travel is I look for gyms, I look for cheap gyms because they all have the kind of the same stuff. And in Casablanca, there wasn't much option. So the cheapest gym, it was like a 45 minute ride away and, um, or walk, I can't remember. And, uh, and my, my buddy, his name is Jan, he said he basically said like yeah but you're not taking into consideration that the time that you're saving now it was the difference in the price was like 150 bucks but if i value my time at 200 bucks an hour well i'm i'm losing a significant amount of money walking 45 minutes each day just to save 150 bucks a month right so i ended up paying the 200 or the 250 the one that was nearby my house and that conversation kind of like flipped everything for me okay i need to start valuing my time some people though some people have more time than they have money at this time and that's why i wanted to do this video if you don't have the money right now to invest you're just starting off well here you can do it yourself you you have to learn how to do pivot tables and whatnot but i want you to have the data to do it yourself however if you have the money and you want to exchange your money for your time it's the same thing that i do on my website all of my tricks and secrets are out there on my youtube i only cater to people 
who are at that point in their life where they value their time more than the cost that I'm charging and that's why they pay me. And so that's the only reason why I want you to pay me for this service as well, is, is, is if you want to exchange your time for money. And John is the expert and he, he is damn well the expert and I'm, I'm gonna use you again for sure when I make my next purchase. So thanks for doing that. We're going to do another video on, uh, tell us the next video that we'll do and I'll, after this one is ended, I'll link it, it'll be in the description and I'll link it um, in the outro in this video. Yeah, the next video is going to be a just an overview of the entire report. So from start to finish, everything that comes with it, how it works. It's a, we're going to touch on a lot of the same things we've talked about here, but it'll just be a more clear understanding of exactly what you're going to be getting with the market analysis. Okay, so for those who want to purchase it, what, what am I getting for my money? Exactly. Okay, perfect. We'll do that. And until next time, happy hosting, everybody.